So you want to do a case swap in your MR2 Spider or in another MR2 or in a Honda Civic or whatever in your RX-7. So first thing you got to do is you have to find a K20 or a K24 engine, right? Once you found it, I suppose you want to rebuild it just like what I'm going to do. So when, in order to rebuild it, what do you have to do? You have to put the engine in pieces, rip it apart, fix it, refresh it and put it back together, right? Well, guess what? Before you do that, watch this video because I'm going to walk you through a few logical steps on how to tear the engine apart in parts that are actually logical and it will help you to do the necessary checks. This is not a full rebuild video, but this is a video that shows you how to take things apart and check the engine for seeing its health and everything, refreshing some key elements such as the water pump and the oil pump and put it back together. So without further ado, join me and let's dive right into it. All right, we're back in the warehouse. As you can see here, there's a K20 here. And as you can see here, there's a MR2 Spider or a MRS, depending where you are in the world. And as you can imagine, the idea is to put these together. <coughs> but anyway, that's the goal. So today we're going to be focusing on this guy over here, actually stripping down the engine and taking a look inside and seeing how things are going. We'll replace various pumps, various gaskets. I'm going to also uh, take a look at where we have potential leaks and from there, fix, change the, replace the gaskets and everything and put it back together. And let's see how much we can get done in this video. So let's get right into it. All right, let's get started. So this is what we are dealing with. When I usually take an engine apart, I like to start by removing the engine harness. So you can see this one is still fully assembled. All the sensors are on. So this is going to be the first thing I'm planning to do is remove the engine harness and all the sensors that are in the way. You can see the stock intake manifold is still there as well. That's also something I'm planning to ditch really quickly. Let's get started. So remove step by step all the little plugs and screws holding the engine loom in place. And be careful when using a screwdriver not to damage the plugs. And also, if you have to tug or pull on the cables, make sure to pull on the plug rather than on the cables to avoid damaging that harness. Mine is in really good condition, so I do not plan remaking one. So here you can see all the elements could be removed cleanly, including the coil packs and everything. So this is really what you want to get is a damage free engine harness ready to be reused as soon as we're putting the engine back together. Well, would you look at that? That's way cleaner already. Lots of free space. We could see better what's going on. So let's continue and remove everything step by step. Okay, there goes the fuel rail, the alternator as well. And now let's remove the stock water pump and the stock inlet manifold. Those are two main elements that I need to remove. The inlet manifold is a bit of a pain because you got to remove little bolts that are in between the runners basically and as you can see I'm running around all over the place back and forth and it turns out that even by loosening the water pump I could free up a little bit free space just to be able to remove the manifold and now I'm working on the water pump right now as you can see there are quite a few parts related to it it's a big unit and Actually, this is a really key part for when you're doing K swaps because on the K24, for example, you need to reuse this kind of system in order to have something that works well. So now let's attack the exhaust manifold as well. Removing all the rusty bolts. We're going to be getting rid of this because that's super restrictive and it's uh, not very useful for the rest of the swap since I have a super fancy swap header by PPE that is gonna make a lot more gains than the stock one. I like to also just re-empty the oil a little bit from the oil filter. And now I'm running into my first headache is to remove the crank pulley. So I decided to just give up for a second there and focus on other things in the meanwhile. So I'm taking the valve cover off 
inspecting everything and we're going to be ready to turn the engine over watch out when you do that there's a lot of oil and coolant that might drip out so my rib tracks swiss tracks floor will get dirty very quickly so anyway let's take a look inside and check the general condition of the engine we can see that there isn't any abnormal wear on the camshafts or on the lobes and on the various parts so that's already a very good sign i can also see that the engine is in better general condition than my 2zz that i put in because the 2zz was so brown inside due to old oil and probably a lot of blow by and fumes that made everything very dirty inside and you can tell that this engine is way cleaner it has like 150,000. and when i'm on the point to say how clean it is there is however a lot of soot inside the exhaust ports of the cylinder head basically and that is going to need a lot of cleaning so here you can see also on the intake it's not super clean so let's give all of that a clean make sure nothing falls into the cylinders that sounds really stupid but that's something you definitely have to watch out for you can tell also that uh, the cooling wasn't changed all too often so we're definitely going to have to give a clean and flush out the the residues and here you can see the couple oil leaks i could spot so one on the side of the cam timing cover here as well next to the pulley and at the bottom as well of the oil pan so those are areas i'm gonna have to address and make sure i fix those oil leaks once i'm reassembling the engine so let's remove the oil pan here i like to use a little screwdriver to pry on it a little bit make sure not to damage it either and giving it a quick clean inspection as well you could see i was talking about brown things this engine is a little bit brown at the bottom but it actually comes off just by wiping it so it's actually a fairly clean engine on the inside which is very relieving and here you can see the stock honda oil pump that many people told me i don't need to change but in all honesty now that everything's open i'm just going to put a new one it's not that expensive and it's definitely worth the hassle and the headaches in case i would damage something so what i like to check also is see if there's any metal residues inside the pickup oil pickup area and it looks very clean so that is a good sign that means that there isn't much debris in there so let's check also in the oil pan see if there's anything odd in there and to be honest nothing unusual no chunks of metal nothing so that is a very good sign As you can see now, there's a lot of Honda gasket, liquid gasket all over here. So we're going to be cleaning that up with, I like using a razor blade like I did with my 2ZZ swap. Um, I like to, in all honesty, the razor blade doesn't quite cut it for the whole procedure. It allows you to take off the big parts, make sure nothing falls into the engine while you're removing it you know also from the the old gasket that it doesn't fall into the engine so make sure to clean out everything and every single piece you remove falls out of the engine not into it so here you can see after cleaning it off with a, a, a rotary uh, metal brush basically you can get a super clean and nice surface that will allow you to have a gasket put on it all right it's the next day I sadly couldn't get as much done as I wanted to because I was lacking power to remove the bolt from the crank pulley that you can see right here, this one. It's super tight. According to Honda, it's 245 Newton meters of torque in order to pull this one out. As you can see, this one has already suffered a fair bit because I just was going like crazy with my impact wrench here and actually I did not manage to take it out without actually using a special upgrade and that I want to thank one of my friends from the garage Spirit Motors who let me use this special Honda part that actually 
allows you to block the crank like this see and it allows you in the middle to give extra force inside in order to remove it and actually I even tried just like that you know taking a big wrench like this you know but I really didn't have enough strength even by doing with such huge uh, breaker bars I could not manage to unlock it and I tried one last thing and that was actually a really good idea as well from one of my friends he told me upgrade your battery from your impact wrench so I had 2.5 amps and I have 4 amps and it became so damn powerful like unbelievable and actually I think it was a combination of this impact wrench getting this bolt a bit loose like this and then actually using the breaker bar like this they got it loose finally so it was not a small job at all and but I'm happy now now it seems to be unlocked so let's take a look at that there we go good news this bolt is out and we can continue dismantling the front timing cover and also the timing chain so let's get that done I'll be using again my impact wrench to remove all the multiple screws on the front of the cover and I will be also removing one sensor you can see the oil coming out I like to gently tap it with a plastic mallet to take it off I removed the valve cover once again so I can see the top pulleys and the chain as well check the general condition of the sliders and everything and everything seems in okay condition for the mileage I will be looking again quickly to see if I don't see any damage anywhere but it looks like this engine is really in excellent condition I know it's a bit overkill but I still plan to remove the timing chain and all the sliders and put a brand new one of all of them on so just to make sure it's in good condition these chains do tend to extend a tiny bit so that's why I want to replace it so now you put the pulleys on both the markings as you can see here that is according to the Honda manual and you block it as well down on the crankshaft as well on the little points and dots that you see here which is the zero point basically and now you can remove the chain and you basically when you reassemble it all you need to do is keep it on those marks put back the chain on and you're good to go so make sure things don't move out too much remove the sliders and I'll be also removing the lower sliders for the oil pump once I'm done with the timing chain as you can see here and something seems to prevent me to do it so anyway let's take a look and see how everything looks once there's no more chain and sliders and the tensioner either so all we are left to do now is take care of the oil pump which is at the bottom here and in order to remove the chain of the oil pump you just need to remove the oil pump so that makes it really easy I wanted to quickly check the crankshaft for visual inspection see the play quickly and see if anything's dodgy but honestly the engine is in good condition I am not worried at all and I can tell that even without removing the whole thing I already have a very good idea of the general condition of the engine so anyway it's always good to do a visual check but I'm also a firm believer that there's no point in disassembling things that work perfectly either but a good inspection is always very important especially when everything is outside of the car and ready to be installed here you see a couple of the things that we removed and now it's going to be time to reassemble so we're back in the office I hope this video was useful for you just before anybody starts commenting below saying oh why are you not rebuilding the whole engine well guess what my friend 
I have other better things to do. No, oh. but basically what I, I want to use the K20 in its stock block form. The engine has been running perfectly, compression tests, everything. So I do not see the point in taking something apart that works perfectly. So that's why I'm keeping it as is, I'm not going to be tearing it down further as what you saw in the video. And from here on, it's assembly time. So you will see the next video, I already shot a huge part of it, so it already will be coming next week. So make sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you can get all the necessary information to learn how to rebuild K20s, for example, or just do a refresh to your engine. I'm sure there is valuable information for everybody. So, and there's one more thing I wanted to show. I'll be starting to make stickers. As you can see, this is the first, first uh, design. So the Japanese one and the uh, Western one. If you feel like supporting the channel, hit me up in the comments or whatever. I'll be selling these stickers just as a symbolic price, but this can help me. Feed my addiction of modifying cars and filling it and showing it to you. No, anyway, so if you want to support the channel, the first and easiest thing you can do is just like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to go a bit further, well, hit me up and let's see what we can do. So without further ado, I wish you guys an awesome week and I will see you next week. Peace.